April 21st, 1820 is an important day in the history of physics. On that day, Hans Christian Ersted was giving a lecture and he noticed something about a compass needle that was sitting on his desk. He had a battery and uh, as soon as, every, anytime he closed the switch and um, made current flow in the wire, so here this diagram shows electrons are drifting this way, which means conventional current is flowing this way. But uh, when the current flowed in the wire, there was a change in the compass needle. So with the switch in the open position, the compass needle was aligned with the wire. When the switch was closed, the compass needle changed its orientation and pointed perpendicular to the flow of the electric current. And if the battery um, were reversed so that the electrons drifted in the other direction, meaning conventional current flows this way, then the compass needle swung a full 180 degrees. So with no current, no deflection of the needle, and with a change in the current, there was a change in the compass, but the compass was always oriented uh, perpendicular to the wire. So this gave rise to um, electromagnetism. In other words, it made the link between electricity and magnetism. So another demonstration of Ersted's discovery would be to take a wire and uh, suspend the wire vertically and then take a, I don't know, a piece of cardboard or a piece of plexiglass, something that sits in a plane perpendicular to the wire and place not just one, uh, you could place a whole series of compass needles in a circle and as long as current flows in that wire, the compass needles will trace out a particular path. So in this case, uh, again, it shows electron drift is up. That means conventional current is downward in the wire. And if that's the case, then all the compass needles will align so that each and every compass needle is perpendicular to the wire. So that means in the plane of this piece of cardboard or plexiglass, the compass needles trace out a circular path. And so that hints at another right-hand rule for uh, electric currents. So let's see, in this example, we showed current pointing down. Here's an example where current flows upward. And so the way we use the right-hand rule is you point your thumb in the direction of the current, and then you imagine wrapping your fingers around in a circular path, and your fingers would model the direction of magnetic field that exists. So magnetic field lines, as we learned earlier, they always form closed loops, even if you have something like a bar magnet. Uh, it seems as if magnetic field lines come out of north and go into south, but that's just what they're doing external to the magnet. The field lines continue internal to the magnet, and they form closed loops on themselves. So in the case of straight wires, the magnetic field lines, again, form closed loops. So based on this right-hand rule, if you were to point your thumb in the direction of this supposed current, then your fingers would wrap around, and we could say that the magnetic field lines would look something like this. And then as you get farther away in distance from the wire, as R increases, the magnetic field strength decreases, so the field lines are actually a pattern of concentric circles. They extend far afield, but the farther away you get, the greater the spacing between field lines. Hopefully that picture is not too messy. You can see this sort of three-dimensional view of magnetic field. Another way to write that would be to say if we have a wire with current pointing to the right, then there's magnetic field coming out of the page at all points above the wire. Magnetic field lines are pointing into the page at all points below the wire. And then it points in the foreground or in front of the wire, magnetic field lines point down. And then in the background behind the wire, there's magnetic field lines that point upward. So it's probably better to draw it like this.
as circular paths going around the wire. So in the next video, we're going to derive the equation that expresses exactly how we can calculate the strength of that magnetic field. The magnetic field is some function of R. As the distance along the radial axis increases, the magnetic field decreases, and what exactly is the equation uh, that expresses that?